Hello, vintage computer fans. I would like to wrap up my presentation and demo of the classic 1981 microprocessor MPF1B by also giving you a glimpse of the Palo Alto Basic um, option which is available for this machine. In my previous video I showed you um, machine language programming and this is where the machine really shines. But you can also have um, Palo Alto Tiny Basic which is in the same ROM as the monitor here and it starts at address 800, right? So, you can just start it from there and BASIC is available. And once you have BASIC fired up, you get this uh, keyboard template and you're good to go. So the BASIC is of course um, very limited and restricted. For example, there are no floating point variables, no string variables. And um, so your variable, variable names can be from A to F. You can also have um, um, A0 to uh, F9, basically, right? But that's it. So, I mean, but those are enough um, uh, variables for, you know, a normal basic program. And <clears throat> so those are 16-bit um, uh, signed integer uh, variables. And that's good enough to write a program or two, right? So let's start by maybe inputting a version of the factorial function, right, which I have prepared here. So the basic is uh, similar in the sense um, to the ZX or ZX81 the spectrum basics, right? So there is no parser basically and of course, you know, you don't have um, full alphanumeric um, input because there is no keyboard really that would support more than hex characters, right? So um, you have to input the program um, using tokenized um, like statements, right? So and um, there is a button basically like in the ZX81 for each basic token and you see them on the keyboard here, right? So let's start by assigning uh, 1 to F, right? And so let F equals 1, we hit the enter button and now we can go to line number 20 and um, there is an input so we are storing um, the number of which we want to compute the factorial in the A variable input A enter at line number 30 we then have a for loop so for C from 1 I have to use the shift button here in order to get to the equal sign for C from 1 to A right and then in line 40 again we now need to use the let statement because as of, it needs to the line really needs to start with a token and it also does syntax checking right away right and editing is uh, um, cumbersome on this machine right so if you make a mistake in entering a line or so rather than using the line editor basically you're better off by you know just inputting the same line again. So f equals f times c multiply the accumulated value with the current counter, right? So you see that, you know, the multiply operator um, is displayed like this. And then next that's the next button. You know, sometimes one needs to look or the keys. Next, C, right? Now, at the end of the loop in line 60, we have the factorial computed and available in the variable f. So we are printing f. And then we also have to use the stop token to terminate the program. So now it's good to go and I can simply hit run. I can also use a line number to start it from a specific line number. I can use run 10 or I can just use run, right? There's a delete button here. Okay. Enter. So now it asks for the input to the A variable. Let's use 3. Enter. And there's a result, right? So in order to um, Output, like the print statement, it's blocking, so in order to continue with the program you have to hit the cont continue button. And then now in the 70, that's the line number where the stop 
uh, is encountered, right? So the program is done now. So let's run it one more time from line number 10. How about we use 8, right? Okay, and there we already encountered the overflow, right? There's an error message. Factorial of 7 is uh, 5040. And it overflows for factorial of 8. Yeah, um, so you can always hit the reset button, right? And then uh, you get back to the monitor program. And from there, you can also um, invoke the basic such that the basic program is not being destroyed. So rather than calling it from 0800, you would call it from 0817. That way, your basic program is still in memory. So, and I can use now. First, let me show that it's still there, right? Hit run again. That didn't work. And there it is. So, it's still in memory. And uh, you can also list individual lines, right? List 10 shows on the display like this, then. and you gotta use the enter button to exit the listing mode, and then you can list another line. You cannot really scroll through the program, right? I had hoped that I could use the cursor keys here to um, go up and down through the program through the line numbers, but that's not possible, unfortunately. Anyhow, um, so what else can we demonstrate? There is a um, printer uh, routine in the printer EEPROM, which is meant for listing basic programs, right? So let's try to get a nice print out of our basic program. And for this, we got to go back to the monitor, right? And we are calling the um, basic listing routine at address 6400. And well, let's go. There's our basic listing, and maybe <clears throat> instead of um, implementing the factorial function, let's implement um, the sum function from uh, 1 to n. So rather than multiplying with c in line 40, we are um, adding c, right? So for this, I'm taking a look at line 40. And I can now, you know, the easiest way is really to simply um, enter the line again. That's what I'm going to do. So we are saying let f equals f plus c. And run this program. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 should be 6, right? And it's not. Hmm, it's 7. And you know why? It's simple. Because in line 10, we initialized the f variable not to 0 but to 1. So let's also fix that. Let f equals 0. And now we should be getting 6. Mm, there you go. Alright guys, let's wrap this video up by demonstrating how to call firmware routines uh, from BASIC. So this time I'm going to start my BASIC code. My program will be gone, right? And uh, double check if I hit run, you know, nothing happens, so it's gone. Yeah, so in my previous video about the microprocessor I showed you how to um, call firmware routines from machine code programs. 
that what drives the display or drives the speaker, right? And um, there are two um, firmware routines that don't require any register um, arguments, right? Or any do not prepare memory regions to be prepared. So one is at tone one kilohertz, and the other one is to tone two kilohertz. Those routines are being used to drive the speaker for the um, cassette output, right? They are uh, used for encoding zeros and ones as um, 1 kHz and 2 kHz tones on tape. So let's write a little basic program that first calls, um, and there's a call um, statement, right? That first calls the 1 kHz uh, routine, which is at 1508 decimal, and that corresponds to um, hex address 05E2. Entering that. And then let's also put in a call for the 2 kilohertz routine at 1502, which corresponds to hex 05DE. And those are documented in the user manual, right, as monitor um, firmware routines that you can call. And uh, in line number 30, we just loop. Go to, where's the go to? Go to 10. So you hear the 1 and 2 kilohertz tones, right, how they alternate. Now there's no, no easy way to actually stop the program, right? You have to hit the monitor or reset button. And then, yeah, you can just, you know, do a warm start of the basic as we did before. 0, 08, no. 0, 08, 17, right? And then our program is still there. Okay, say you wanted to uh, call a subroutine here and maybe have a delay in between those two uh, tones, right? Like a pause. Then um, we could, for example, have the idea at line 15, we could do a go sub, right? Go sub 50, and that would be a delay uh, loop, basically. And um, trying to do this, you know, um, let me put that in. And also one in... Uh, at line 25, the go to 10 was in line 30, right? So I'm also doing a goes up 50 here, right? So, and now at 50, I'm just doing a for loop that waits for A from 1 to 500, 60, next a 70 return establish exit Goes up 50. The other tone. At 25 we should have another goes up 50. And at 30 we should have go to 10. And let's make the for loop a little bit longer. All right, you get the idea. Um, this is how you would use the basic in your microprocessor. And um, the basic has some more features. 
for example um, you can even write to um, memory so the syntax for this is something like let m m for memory right that's a special variable basically and then you would use um, a the address basically and after that um, you can uh, yeah you can basically poke values into the memory so that way you can even write uh, machine code programs for this machine and execute them uh, from basic and of course you can mix and match so you could just call a machine code um, routine using call that you have implemented um, that you wrote with a machine code monitor right and uh, call this from basic all right guys i hope you enjoyed it and um, that it might help you to operate your microprocessor thanks for watching